Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is George and this is... The One. I'm trying to share my experience with drones, what I've learned over time. Two and a half years to be precise. I recently posted a video where I was debating whether it is worth it to buy an inexpensive or cheap drone to learn how to fly. And my answer was kind of mixed. Jeez. Noisy motorboat. But anyways. Jeez. Let him pass, I guess. So today I've gone to a place where I always like to come and fly because it's kind of undisturbed. It's in the river, so I'm not interfering with any city bylaw or it's not anyone's private property. It's actually Canadian Crown property, so I'm part owner of this too. And yeah, the river is wide open, so it's, it's a pretty good, darn good place to do this. And I got both my Holy Stone and my DJI Mini 2 here, and I'm gonna try to launch them both. Now, in case of the Holy Stone, I haven't used this thing in over six months. I have to be honest with you, back then I tried to do something kind of a little bit silly with it, and it ended in a crash. So there might be some calibrations needed before it takes off, but I inspected the drone, it looks like it's all in good shape. So we're gonna try and launch this, and then we're gonna do some comparison flights and uh, you could see firsthand maybe even side by side what this is going to look like the mini 2 versus the holy stone now as i told you in the other video when i first bought my first drone i did not trust the mini drone under 250 grams to be a good enough quality for me to be even interested in it I was proven wrong and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. <laughs> All right, now this is the holy stone I got here. This requires a little bit of assembly. There are two pairs of propellers that go with it and they are marked A and B. So I gotta be careful here which one goes where. This propeller is marked B. So this guy actually goes on clockwise, just like a regular nut or screw would go. This one is a little bit hard to put on. I don't know why this is. This was right from the get-go when I first got this drone, this was the case. It doesn't affect the operation of the drone in any serious way. Put the other one on. So this is four propellers we gotta put on like this. And yeah, they're nice propellers. They're large, you would think that this would give the drone a lot of lift and you'd be right. Yeah, let's put the landing gear first. See, there are notches here. There's one for each side. Yeah, if you could see this, there's a pattern like that. You put it in, turns, then slides in here, clicks in, solid. The other one, piece of cake. None of this is really difficult to do. See, she's almost ready. Now the last thing with the assembly process is uh, putting on the camera. It slides in here like so. If I can line this up properly, yes. And then there's a, a lock here plugged in there. So this is the beast. This is what it looks like. And we're almost ready to fly. So now I got to dig out my controller and my iPad and calibrate the GPS. And there's three revolutions this way. When they go dark green, which is now, then I have to take it like this, go three revolutions that way. And when it is red and green, like right now, this means it is calibrated, ready to take off. There it is, guys. The holy stone. Now you see it, it's supposed to be hovering, it's supposed to be maintaining its position. For some weird reason, it's moving around a lot. I don't want to go too close to it because I don't trust it. I'm having trouble controlling this with the needed precision here. I hope you can see the drone at all. There, you should be able to see it right now. It's very hard to maneuver, very, very hard. 
Like, you know, I'm not a beginner. I've been flying these drones for a while. Let's go down the river. Yeah, if I go too fast, the drone uh, tilts and then you can't see. See right now, I got it hovering over there. You could probably not see this. Let's go a little bit further. Uh, yeah, I could see the distance on my controller. That is 125 meters away from me. 157, I'm going a little higher because the height is at 13 meters. So let's go, try and go a little higher. Yeah, it's at 320 meters away and I don't want to go any further than this, but yeah, I think my picture is already frozen. So I'm flying it backwards now, I can see it. I still don't have any picture on my screen. Let's turn it around so I could see us. It's got a nice approach now to the island. Yeah, it's hovering more stable now, that's kind of nice. I'm going to try and fly an orbit around myself, go a little bit closer. Because that's one of the challenges I wanted to try out with this. Go a little bit higher so we don't crash it into the bushes. It's not doing that bad actually right now. Go a bit, a bit closer because I can't really get the perspective very well. Now I can get low, go lower, holy stoner. Go a little bit higher, because I don't trust you that low. Oh, I turned that the wrong way. Apparently not, but somehow. All right, this was, I would say, for the kind of drone it is, I'm quite impressed. This did pretty good. Now we're going to fly her back here. Uh, she's not quite responding the way that I'm used to it, but... Man. See, now there's absolutely no input from the controller. Now, one thing that I can do with this drone is turn off the GPS. And we'll see what happens with it. Right away, it's starting to drift. Holy moly. So I have to bring it back. This is definitely a challenge to fly it without the GPS. Let me tell you, it requires a lot of concentration. Holy, didn't I turn this back on? <laughs> yeah, I turned the GPS back on because even if I take my eyes off this drone for a second, it does its own thing. And even now with the GPS on, it takes it a while to settle in where it actually is supposed to hover. Like, you know, if you're new to flying, I mean, let's be honest here. You think you would have managed? Like, look at this. I'm not doing anything to the controller and look at what it's doing. Like it's, it's going back and forth and it's doing its own thing. Well, we still have battery left, so let's go over that bridge there for a sec. It's amazing, the battery actually does pretty good. <laughs> Can't go too close to the people with this because this is not a proof for it. I mean, no doubt about it, this is not a proof for that. My battery is still going pretty strong. That's uh, quite impressive. You know, that battery is two and a half years old. Yeah. 
Yeah, I wouldn't want to try and come any closer to the camera with this. See, this is hovering in place. There's no input from me. It should be rock steady. And for the moment it's doing okay. All right, I think that's enough. I'm not moving it around as much as it is. Like it's very, very shaky. Like if I go too close to the shore, then I'm pretty sure I run the risk of crashing it into the tree or something. Like it's definitely a challenge to fly this, but let's fly a loop. Maybe seagulls after it now. I gotta be careful with those. It flies fast. Just gonna try and get it a little closer to me. Not too close because I don't trust it. Yeah, there the red light's on. No, not over the water. Not toward me so fast. There, just go down. <laughs> I want you to see this, so. But you see, I'm having a lot of trouble even to get it to land on a place that, that I pick. This was probably one of the most successful flights with this drone that I've ever done. Now I'm gonna pack this in, gotta take the propellers off again, the landing gear, the whole shebang, and then I'm gonna get out my DJI Mini 2 and you're gonna see how fast I will have it ready to fly. All right, I'm back with the DJI. Gotta turn on the, the iPhone, get the DJI app started, turn on the controller, double click. Here's the drone. No assembly required. I had to take off the gimbal guard and uh, I put number 4 ND filter on instead of the number 16 that I had on there before. Double click. There. She's on. Now with this thing is quite easy to hand launch. We're still waiting for it to acquire all the satellites. Right now it's still in the red. There are six satellites. Home point updated. Isn't that wonderful? There. She's good to go. And I'll show you how stable this thing actually is. I don't want to come too close, but see what I mean? With the holy stone, I could not chance this. But anyways, let's give her some challenges here. Shall we? Same thing as we did with the other drone. And now, I'm actually getting some footage that I, that I quite like. And we're going a little bit higher because we can easily go over top of these bridges. Now I'm at 69 meters. I have total confidence in this drone, you know? There's absolutely no issue with this. Only experienced aviators can answer this correctly. Give me a <laughs> Gotta do the same circle. Same idea. This isn't perfectly smooth, but I mean, it can be done. See, this is where the fun comes in, because you can control this drone so damn well. You actually see your progress as you're flying more and more. <laughs> now, both of these drones have intelligent flight modes. I consciously avoid them because I don't want to become reliant on them. I know that my footage could be better in some cases if, if I was just using it. However, the goal is to get good with this manually. And with this Mini 2, it's, 
it's actually possible to practice this and, and really make a progress. You can see that this drone is reliable, it flies well, it hovers in place perfectly still. A joy to fly. Now well, we got 52% of battery left. You think I'm gonna let this go to waste? Hell no! Now we're at 43 meters of altitude, so I can easily go over that bridge. Now we're gonna try and go alongside of it, flying backwards, sideways. She's a little jumpy, so we're gonna go in cinema mode. Right, we're gonna get some good footage of this bridge. enough right there. All right, 26% of battery. I'm going to push the return to home button. Return to home. See what happens now? She's just, she's going to gain altitude. Going to go up to 100 meters. I know there's no nobody around here, so it's not a problem. <laughs> and she has started the return. We're at twenty-three percent battery. We're gonna see how how long it takes this drone to come back. Moving pretty steady. I could by the way move the gimbal while it's returning to home. So we can turn it to see where it's actually going. Oh, she must be right above me. Landing. Yeah, it says landing, see? And we're gonna see, I mean, I didn't mark this or anything, but we're gonna see where she's gonna land. See, I'm on an island here, so I gotta really watch this. There's a cancel the landing button in case but I think she's uh, steady, headed toward the island, no problem at all. She's coming down. Let's just grab her out of the air. And there we go. This was the flight with the DJI Mini 2. I got some more nice footage that I can actually use to upload to stock footage. I upload my footage to Pond5, which I think is an awesome site. I hope this demonstration makes it perfectly clear that this drone is well worth its money. The Holy Stone right now you can buy it for $4.99 and I think it might have two batteries with it. But you know the difference is like day and night. This thing you can rely on, you can have fun with it, you can control it well. If you're totally new to this. Well, you might want to go somewhere where there's no chance of it landing in the water, you know, maybe in a wide open field, like a soccer field or something like that. But you will be able to learn this pretty quickly. Now with the Holy Stone, I don't know. 
you be the judge. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was more, uh, not, there's nothing too factual here, nothing too scientific, but I think the demonstration made my point. <laughs> If you could hit the like button, that'd be really awesome. I much appreciate it. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, well, trying to grow it, right? So thanks for that as well.